outflow tract ventricular arrhythmias are the most common type of idiopathic ventricular arrhythmias. They typically occur in young patients. Differentiating between right ventricular outflow tract and left ventricular outflow tract origins of ventricular premature complexes or ventricular tachycardia is a fundamental task in clinical electrophysiology as it dictates the procedural approach whether you should go by the venous approach or by the arterial approach for catheter ablation. Since both outflows are superiorly located, both typically present with an inferior axis, meaning that tall R waves in inferior leads 2, 3 and AVF. The primary differentiation lies on the horizontal plane, that is precordial leads. 70 to 80 percent of outflow tachycardias originate from right ventricular outflow tract. Small numbers can originate just above the outflow tracts as well, like aortic cusp ventricular tachycardia. We'll have a look at general morphology rules. This is known to almost every student of cardiology. Basic pattern is left bundle branch block for RVO2 origin. That's because of delayed activation of the left ventricle as occurs in left bundle branch block also. LVO2 origin, RBBB pattern or a typical ABBB pattern. V1 morphology, deep S wave, small or absent R wave in RVO2 origin. Again, the LBBB pattern. In LVO2 origin, in V1, tall R wave and smaller S wave. Transition lead, usually V3 or later, V4, V5, in RVOT origin and usually V2 or earlier, V1, V2, in LVOT origin. And lead 1, usually positive, leftward, and there is an RVOT origin, of a negative or isoelectric when there is an LVOT origin, all based on the location of the LVOT and RVOT as you can see in the echo picture. When the transition occurs at lead V3, simple observation is often insufficient and specific indices are used to refine the diagnosis. V2 transition ratio, this is a highly reliable metric, it is calculated by comparing the R wave proportion during the arrhythmia 